Grace and peace to you. Uh, thanks for joining me for another uh, weekly devotional. I was thinking this week, um, I went to go boil some water in my kitchen. I was going to boil some eggs, and uh, I got the water in the pot, and I turned on the, uh, the heat to high, and, I, and, and then I got a phone call. So I went to the other room, and you know, a few minutes later, I started hearing this uh, crackling noise, and lo and behold, I returned to the kitchen, and the water was boiling over. And I thought to myself, as we experience this week of anxiety and difficulty in our culture right now, that um, we have a lot of heat right now in our world. And, um, and when you don't monitor that heat, um, the water begins to boil over in unhealthy ways. And, and I think that's where we find ourselves in a lot of ways in our own spirituality. Um, how do we regulate that heat, that difficulty, that struggle that we find yourself in the middle of life? You know, before all this coronavirus stuff, all this social distancing, we had some mechanisms that I think were in place that we just kind of took for granted. I know I did. Um, you know, coming to church and seeing each other and, you know, and, and venting and saying, here's what I'm struggling with and here's where it, it's difficult. and. And, and then supporting one another in that natural way, those systems that we had in place. We, we've been, we've been uh, knocked off of some of those routines and some of those ways that we've been able to regulate that heat. And I think we're, it's left us in this very vulnerable and precarious position that um, heat's always gonna be turned up at some point in our life. It's, it's a tough world, things are gonna happen. But when we don't have those structures in place to be able to regulate that, to be able to share life in a healthy way, we begin to boil over. Um, you know, back in Lent, our uh, theme that we looked at was the portico wholeness wheel and what it meant to be to have a healthy spirituality. And we looked at six different ways in which we do that. As we hear this whole coronavirus thing, um, I'm really hearing two things about health right now. One is physical health. How do we stay safe and healthy with our bodies? How do we not get sick and transmit viruses? And then the other you know, big focus has been how do we get this economy going? How do we keep people working? How do we have a livelihood? Um, but what I haven't heard a lot of is um, social health and those other things that we study, intellectual health and emotional health, right? And uh, vocational health, what does it mean to be God's people in this time. And I really think we have to address those in some deeper ways. That when we neglect that, we leave ourselves vulnerable to, to that boiling over and acting out. Now, when we turn on the news and we see, um, we see such discord in our society right now, we know that tensions are bubbling over. And I think it has a lot to do with we don't have these mechanisms in place to engage one another in healthy ways. Um, I think we need to find ways, um, instead of speaking uh, against one another, to speak up for one another, to build up the body of Christ in this pivotal time. Um, I know I'm gonna be trying to pray and, and, uh, and talk with our leaders in the church about what that might look like for us, but, but even on a larger scale, what does that look like for you and for us as a society to engage one another and to bless one another? You know, we, we sometimes get stuck into this trap and I think it's a binary trap that people draw a line in the sand and they say, choose, choose this side or that side. And I think that's, um, that's something we fall prey to, that that's not a, a reality of how life is. Um, God chooses humanity, right? God chooses creation to love and to bless and to lay down his life for. And, and we as the church, we don't define ourselves by, by our being left or being right or being for this or for that. Um, we, are, we are for God's values. We're for all creation. Um, if you're finding yourself and you're, you're, you're boiling over it with your anxiety, I want you to pay attention to that. You know, I found myself snapping um, at people for no really good reason. And I have to take a step back and think, what's that really about? None of us are immune to this long-term effects of, of this social distancing and being apart from one another. Um, we're gonna try, have to be finding ways to connect and to see each other as people and not just uh, amorphous names on a social media feed. 
Um, these are God's people. These are brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, our call as the church is to continue to pray, to con continue to build bridges, continue to speak for unity and justice and peace, continue to repudiate violence um, and racism, um, and to continue to lift up particularly the broken and the marginalized in these difficult times. That hasn't stopped. It's only changed in the mode in which we're doing that. Uh, and so know that I'm praying for you in these difficult times and know that we need each other. We gotta hold together. We can't fall apart. Um, and when you're feeling that anxiety, when it feels like you're at that boiling point, return to prayer. Return to the font, to your baptismal promises that we all belong to God. We are brothers and sisters in that same spirit and that God is still on the move in this world. Um, I hope that you'll join me in that time of prayer and I hope that you'll, um, you'll be quick or you won't be quick to judge um, and to cast stones, but quick to build bridges and heal and be the church God called us to be. We belong to him. It is God's kingdom we are called to serve him and to share him, uh, not our own. And so let's, let's do that holy work of the church. Let's humbly come before the Lord, seek his will and his ways, and build bridges between people. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we are at a boiling point. Uh, our anxiety doesn't have good places to go right now. We've neglected some of the healthy aspects of what it means to be spiritually minded people. Help us to have a network of, uh, and a community that love one another and that embody your values for the world. Help us to seek understanding and reconciliation, to repudiate the uh, violence um, and the racism um, and the chaos that we see all around the world right now and help us to build one another up in love, to listen to one another um, and to help be, uh, promote the loving community uh, that, you, that you bless and ordain as your church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you.